In this video, we will be discussing the advanced materials properties of mesh level, color bleed, and self-luminous surfaces available in the Illum Tools materials mapping dialog. These are properties you may seldom have a need to use. However, when the need does arise, it is useful to understand that they are available and how they are employed. Here we have a typical Revit project that includes a media review room. Looking at a ceiling plan, notice the recessed luminaires are fairly close to the wall surfaces. Let's run a quick calculation on this room to see the visualization and have a nickel's worth of discussion on radiosity calculations. For those interested, radiosity is covered in depth in Appendix A of the Illum Tools Help. When the Illum Tools viewer opens, we will be watching the radiosity calculation process. Enable the radiosity mesh in the viewer. This shows the element mesh, or how the room surfaces are divided into pieces that receive light. Through some intelligence, the radiosity calculation process groups elements into larger sections called patches. Once the direct light has been shot from luminaires to surfaces, progressive radiosity looks for the brightest patch in the selected geometry. It becomes a virtual luminaire to broadcast all of its reflected light back into the environment. This constitutes one step and an accounting process commences with the next brightest patch. Eventually all light originally emitted from the luminaires is accounted for and we have reached a state called convergence. Okay, so this is complicated. And to make things even more detailed, Illum Tools uses an automatic adaptive subdivision process where the element mesh is refined based on the luminance of adjacent elements. Therefore, you may see the mesh change in areas of high luminance gradient. The adaptive subdivision process serves to refine the visualization for light patterns or luminance ratios on surfaces. The adaptive process does not, however, change the number of patches in the environment. Remember, patches emit light. When room surface geometry becomes complex, it is possible that the density of patches or light emitters is not adequate to accurately model reflected light, and the end calculation of illuminance on a surface or work plane may suffer. An example might be a large duct blocking light reflected from the ceiling. It can be blocking a row of patches and the duct's effect overstated. The opposite can happen as well. There are no hard rules. It is always geometry dependent. However, fortunately, Illum Tools gives the user the ability to modify the mesh to make it either more or less dense. The good news is the default setting is adequate for 95% of your work. Only when you are in doubt, raise the mesh level. We can illustrate the effect by observing the downlight scallops on the wall. Take a few mental images. Pseudocolor and illuminance settings help to visualize the rough nature of the default wall mesh. It is worth noting that the default mesh results in accurate work plane illuminance. Let's close the viewer and select the north wall of the media room. Let's use Revit's Edit Type button, followed by the Structure Edit button to reveal the material on the wall. Remember, all surface properties in Illum Tools are based on the material. It appears the exterior material is plasterboard. Now open the Illum Tools Materials Mapping dialog. Locate the plasterboard material. We first observe the color, as determined from the Revit graphics color, has a reflectance of 96%. This is quite high. Remember from the last video how we adjusted this? Let's make it 50%. Now click the Advanced Properties button at the top of the dialog. Select the mesh level for the material and increase it to plus 2. This is generally more than enough to compensate for any issues, and higher settings are seldom worth the trade-off in calculation time. Quickly, 
Can you think of a reason to decrease the mesh level? If increasing mesh level makes for longer calculation times, then the inverse is certainly true. The best case might be for a very large surface with low reflectance material, where you do not expect it to have a large impact on the end illuminance result. You might then reduce the mesh level to reduce calculation time. Now let's calculate the room once again. Enable the mesh, and notice the increase in the number of elements visible. The number of patches, remember these are groups of elements, are not visible, but they have increased as well. You can readily see the increased resolution in the light scallop on the wall. Switching to pseudocolor and illuminance, we can also observe the finer mesh density. So that's enough on radiosity meshing. Be aware that when sources are very close to surfaces, or other surfaces may be blocking light heading to the work plane, it may be advisable to increase the mesh level for the material on the room surface reflecting the light. So let's move on and have some fun with color bleed. The radiosity calculation and visualization process is very effective at modeling the effects of colors reflected from richly colored surfaces. If we select the same north wall, edit the type, and edit the structure, we can select the outer layer and apply a paint color. Let's choose maroon. Let's compute the room with the new wall surface color. By adding the maroon surface to the room, we can see the effects of white light reflecting the corresponding maroon color component to adjacent surfaces. This creates a color cast from the maroon surface that is noticeable on the adjacent surfaces and overall room appearance. This is a real world phenomena that you have undoubtedly observed. Some feel the color bleed is exaggerated in radiosity based rendering as the human process of chromatic adaptation fools the brain into remembering the whiteness of the adjacent surfaces, and the color bleed is only observed if you actually look for it. Let's go back to the Illume Tools Materials Mapping dialog. Let's locate the material paint, maroon, and let's adjust the color bleed. From 1, the default condition, which is full bleed, to zero, which is no bleed at all. Now let's recompute the room. Please note, this process has no effect on calculations. It is purely a visual thing. However, the radiosity process must be rerun to adjust the color of the reflected light. It's subtle, but the results with no bleed are much less rich. The decision is up to you. Do you bleed or not? Well, saving the most fun for last, Illume Tools has the ability to model self-luminous surfaces. This is handy for LED strip lights, coves, cold cathode, neon, or luminous surfaces such as walls, signs, or even tabletops. For the purpose of this example, imagine that our interior decorator found this extremely cool conference table that has a color-changing LED work surface. Ooh, what fun! Let's find our table rectangular family in the family list. locate the conference table. Let's duplicate it and now let's rename it to Conference Luminous. Now we need to replace the existing bland old wooden table with the spanky new luminous one. We'll have to go to a floor plan to actually see it. Now use the type editor to change the material on the top surface. From the materials list, let's select vinyl. We'll right click and duplicate that material and let's call it vinyl luminous. We'll exit the dialog 
and let's open the Loom Tools Materials Mapping dialog. Let's locate that vinyl luminous material. Here we are. On the right end we find the luminous color. Notice this color is mapped from the materials graphics color. We could have changed it in Revit, or we can simply do it here. We'll set the color to a soft blue for a relaxed Monday morning meeting. Now we need to only set the actual luminance of the surface. Select the ellipsis in the luminance column. The Loom Tools provides for several different methods to set luminous energy. Many linear products are rated in lumens per foot or meter. Area sources can be rated in lumens per square foot or square meter. Or simply given a uniform luminance in candela per square meter, the standard units for surface luminance. Luminous surfaces are light sources and are considered in the illuminance computations for the room or space. In our case, let's assign a soft glow of 15 candelas per square meter. We'll exit the materials mapping dialog and compute the room once again. Witness the nice soft light for sleepy executives. Well, how about a Friday afternoon 5 p.m. party mixer? Let's turn up the tempo with a 30 candela per square meter hot pink and bring on the weekend. Back to the Illum Tools materials mapping. Locate our vinyl luminous color. Let's change the color. to hot pink. And now we can change the luminance to 30 candelas per square meter. Recompute the room. Here we have the perfect environment for Friday afternoon swinging party. Well that's all folks. We hope you enjoyed the advanced materials mapping features of Illum Tools.